as it goes down, it makes the blade come available, right? So if this isn't operating, if this is jamming for whatever reasons, let us know because like if it gets jammed like this and then comes back up, right? And then you got a big blade staring you. Let, I mean, and yeah, that blade can do a lot of damage, right? Uh, lots of different things on this. It's not more, uh, there's a lot of uh, moving stuff on this, right? There's two ways that this, uh, or a couple ways that this thing can all move, right? Obviously, it's the up and down, right? It does take a little bit of force to get it to go down. It's always good to practice to see what it takes to move it up and down, right? So that you're like, like slamming it right into your wood, right? And also, there's a slide back and forth, right? Now, sometimes this could be locked, right? So it's always good when you're starting off your machinery just to make sure that the actions that you want to do are capable, right? Maybe there's something jammed somewhere that is not usable, right? The other thing with this too, right? Uh, just for how stuff can get moved around, right? You can change the angle of this blade, right? Really see that does put a pressure lock on it, right? But there are also areas that are set on the machine that lock into, right? If you're like, why won't this thing move, right? It's probably because it's in a locked position. You gotta turn this thing, push down the handle, and it pressure locks in most places, but uh, set lock, there's a set lock. And yes, you should probably then also re-release the lock lock and the pressure lock to make sure that it's in the one position. Um, starting off, there are, Missing clamps. Hmm. Okay. There should be two of these on here. For some reason, there is not. <laughs> but um, you can get away with just having the one. Uh, usually, clamp the side that isn't going to be cut off, right? So, for instance, um, if I'm cutting this side of the wood off. I'm clamping this side, right? And you actually do get your hands fairly close in operations on this. Again, uh, this blue track area, do, don't put fingers in the blue track area, right? This area is like a danger zone, kind of like at the table saws or most saws, there's a colored area. It's colored for the reason of, they say, it's probably the Worst idea to put your fingers there. A really skilled tradesman might, but I, for most purposes, stuff does fly off. Once the wood gets cut, it can fly off. If you're cutting small pieces, which is also there, you should also make sure that you're cutting a good distance of material. You're not, these saws aren't really meant for cutting off like a little inch at a time. Yes, you can do it, but it's, you do add added risk when you're cutting shorter amounts of wood off because you have no way of controlling it. You and that, right? Uh, yeah, for even two, it says like no hands on there, right? Because you want something that's relatively up to the whatever length, right? So, clamping. And what else does this machine have on it that helps you cut? It's back here, it's called, uh, same as on the table saw, is your fence, right? It is adjustable to some degree. Uh, in most cases, you won't need to play around with how it can be adjusted, but you can move the fences in and out, right? Then next comes with what type of wood you're using, right? I picked this particular piece because, yeah, it does have some issues to it, right? Um, it's rounded on the one side, not so bad on this side, but when you're cutting something, right? And if everyone can come up close, and I'll show you, same as with the table saw, right? When you're cutting something, obviously you don't want a big gap up against the fence because then the line that you're cutting isn't straight, right? You want it flat up against the fence, right? So, Let's see, did I cover? Oh, also too, when you're cutting, right? 
uh, more of a measurement thing. There is a laser on here, right? Um, as you're going down, you kind of see it. It's, uh, and as you notice, I'm trying to keep my hands away from anything that starts this machinery, right? This is what starts the machinery, right? If you're moving it down, you want to keep your hands away from anything that could possibly engage the machinery if you're getting your hands near stuff, right? Uh, blade cutting, so, uh, let me get a T-square for a second, mark off a line. 